Hello folks, we are standing in a very significant historical location. We are at the old train depot in downtown Tucson, Arizona. On March 18th, 1882, Morgan Earp was shot and killed while playing billiards in the Campbell and Hatch Saloon in Tombstone, Arizona. Following the assassination of Morgan Earp, they shipped his body back to the Earp family in California. And the very next day, Virgil Earp and his wife Allie made preparations to also return to California. It's important to note that Virgil Earp was crippled in his left arm after an attempted assassination attempt on him on December 27th, 1881. So he was headed back to California because he was uh, wanting to go back to attend his brother's funeral and just to get out of Tombstone, Arizona due to the uh, retaliation attempts against him by the Cowboys. So following uh, Morgan's death, as I previously stated, uh, he was going to head back to California, him and his wife, and they were going to take the train. Doc Holliday and Wyatt Earp and the rest of his posse agreed to accompany Virgil and Alley as far as Tucson for their protection. And once they got here in Tucson, they, did, they uh, got off of the train and they stopped long enough to eat supper at the Porter Hotel which I believe was where that two-story building down there is. I'm not 100% certain on that because all these buildings, from my understanding, are not the original. They have been rebuilt, but they are on the correct location. But I believe the Porter Hotel was down that way. So after they, they got off of the train and had supper, they prepared to load back up. And that's when Wyatt and Doc Holliday uh, recognized Frank Stillwell out here near the train depot. And Wyatt Earp had strong evidence and belief that Frank Stillwell was directly involved in the assassination of his brother Morgan Earp. Upon seeing Frank Stillwell, Wyatt Earp chased him down the railroad tracks right here behind where I'm standing for approximately 100 yards. And then Frank Stillwell turned around once he caught up to him and pleaded for his life. But Wyatt had vengeance on his mind and he unloaded both barrels of his double barreled shotgun into Frank Stillwell. It's also reported that following the shooting, the other members of the posse, Doc Holliday included, also went up and emptied their weapons into Frank Stillwell. A witness on the following morning said that Frank Stillwell was one of the most shot up men that he'd ever seen. So anyways, this statue commemorates that event here. You've got Wyatt Earp and Doc Holliday. Very beautiful statues. From my understanding from the guy who runs the transportation museum here, I guess they would have started chasing him somewhere in here since it's the side of the old depot and there's the tracks today as they still stand. But he explained to me when I asked him where did Frank Stillwell actually get shot, he told me it was down here near the dumpsters on the track. So I'm going to walk you down here and show that to you. Now keep in mind that's just what I've been told by one of the museum curators. I can't vouch for it. It's 100% authenticity. But we're obviously close because they got the statues commemorating the event. Okay, so you see the two dumpsters coming in the site. What he explained to me was Frank Stillwell's body was found on the railroad tracks, or right beside him, somewhere in the vicinity of these two dumpsters that you see here. So I'm just going to take an educated guess and say that Frank Stillwell was, or that his body was found out here in this vicinity along beside the tracks. So right over in this area. Again, here's the dumpsters he pointed out to me. And here's the railroad tracks. Now I'm gonna walk you back toward the depot building. And if I'm not mistaken, I wanna say I've heard that this depot has actually been rebuilt a couple of times since the uh, one that was standing in 1882. So all we've got is the location remaining as far as where it happened. I do not believe any of these are the original buildings from, from the old photos that I've seen. But there's also a historical uh, little plaque up here in front of the statues I'll show you. It's pretty neat. So we got the White and Dock statues there in front of the old depot building. If we come over a little further You'll see they've got a little uh, plaque out here telling you the story. 
It says, Wide Herb Shop Frank Stillwell. And I'll read it for you. It says, Wide Herb joined his four brothers in the silver boom town of Tombstone in 1879, where Brother Virgil Earp was Deputy U.S. Marshal. Wyatt was a sometime lawman himself and hoped to become sheriff of the newly formed Cochise County in 1881. He withdrew from the race when the other candidate, John Bean, promised to make him chief deputy. Bean was associated with a rowdy element known as the Cowboys, who were involved in periodic wrestling for raids, robberies, and similar unscrupulous pursuits. Bean reneged on his promise to Earp, causing hard feelings between the two. A situation made worse when Earp stole Bean's girlfriend, 18-year-old Josephine Sarah Marcus. Hostility between Bean and his supporters in the Earp crowd, which included John H. Doc Holliday, a tubercular, hot-tempered dentist and gambler, reached a flashpoint on October 26, 1881, with the infamous shootout near the OK Corral that left three of the Cowboys dead. In the weeks that followed, ambush attacks left Virgil Earp crippled and Morgan Earp dead. Thereafter, the group is believed to have systematically exacted revenge on about a dozen of their enemies, including Frank Stillwell. Stillwell was shot at the Tucson Depot on March 20th, 1882. And now we'll try to zoom in. Maybe you can see an old map of it there. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this historical tour, and uh, have a great day.